Indie games come and go every day, but one indie game that I've been watching like a hawk has finally come out. Ever since its announcement in 2014, Cuphead has had my attention, taunting me from afar. But alas, it kept getting delayed. Days turned into months, months into years, and in the back of my mind, I always knew, I knew that one day, I was gonna have to play and complete this beautiful game. But just because something is beautiful, doesn't mean it isn't difficult. I may be in over my head. Now that it's been out for a few weeks, it's time for me to take a big old gulp of what Cuphead has to offer. Really drink it all in. Sip by Glorious Sip. Okay, I'll stop now. S sorry about that. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of The Completionist. This week, I'm tackling Cuphead, and to be honest, I'm a little nervous about this one. Word on the street is that this game is very, very hard, and completing it is something of a nightmare. So, I decided to double down this week and make it even more challenging. I'm bringing in my buddy Sam Thorne, aka Strippin, a good buddy of mine who happens to be really good at video games, and he's a big time streamer over at twitch.tv slash strippin. We're gonna do this co-op style. Sam, welcome to the show. What's up, bud? Uh, long time viewer, first time co-host. Happy to be here. Um, Sam, you don't have to read that. Oh, welcome, welcome to the show, Sam. Good to have you, man. Thanks, man. Yeah. Oh. Are you ready to chug this mug? Oh, no. I already made that joke. What the f Are you gonna send me the updated script? I'm sorry, this is... Let's, let's just jump to the credits. This is... Gross. Yes! Right. Our first glimpse at Cuphead came during the E3 2014 Xbox press conference, right in the middle of a montage of upcoming games. We only got a few seconds of it, but pretty much everyone wanted to know more about that beautifully animated side-scroller. Yeah, I was sitting right there screaming, wait, what the hell was that? Go back, go back, tell me more about the cup guy. It was a while longer before we would get a proper look at Cuphead. We already knew the animation was stunning, bordering on being one of the best looking games of all time, but we didn't know how its gameplay was gonna shape up. Turns out, Cuphead was a boss rush style game from an indie studio with a lot of ambition. Studio MDHR had been working on Cuphead since 2010 and was founded by Chad and Jared Moldenhauer. These bros have been putting themselves through the ringer to bring their dream game to life, going as far as to refinance their house to keep production going. The dedication seems to have paid off since the final product is a universally praised run and gun shooter with wildly creative and interesting Contra style fights. Right away, my completionist sense was flaring up. I knew this thing was gonna be tough, but I also knew it'd be a great opportunity to show off how well I can muscle my way through a truly difficult video game. And how's that working out for you so far, Gerard? Not super great, Sam. This game can be a real asshole. Even the first few bosses took me several tries to defeat, and I'm hearing rumors that accomplishing every possible task in this game is a monstrous undertaking, which is why I brought you along today with me, Sam. Thanks. I'm excited, I think. As you should be, considering that we're going to have to beat every boss, collect every coin, and a whole bunch more together. Are you excited, buddy? Are you ready for the pain? I, um, I regret agreeing to this, and I regret our friendship entirely. I'm gonna come out and say it, Sam. Cuphead is the best looking game of the year. Really? We had Breath of the Wild this year, Horizon, Persona 5, Hellblade, Mario Odyssey, Splatoon. Gerard, a new Uncharted came out this year. I stand by my statement. Cuphead is the best looking game of 2017. I mean, I can see where you're coming from. I guess it, it is entirely hand-drawn. Mm-hmm. Every character in the game does have dozens of animations and they're all lovingly crafted. Yep. The bosses are all unique. Go on. The levels do look an awful lot like they were lifted straight out of a classic animated movie. You're getting there. And it has, I guess, been a really nice change of pace from all the polygonal realistic games this year. Almost there. All right, fine. It's the best looking game of 2017. 
Nothing looks like it, nothing ever has, and I doubt anyone would be willing to put in the work necessary to make anything like it ever again. It's a beautiful game, all right? You're damn right! While playing through Cuphead, I was constantly amazed by the sheer creativity from developer Studio MDHR. Every single character, every single boss was completely unique and unlike anything I'd seen before. And that's undoubtedly due to the developer's decisions to emulate the visual style of 1930s Fleischer style cartoons. It's an animation style that hasn't been popular for the better part of a century, but it's faithfully recreated right here in Cuphead. It's almost so well done that sometimes you forget that it's even a game at all. Honestly, that huge flower, Cagney Carnation, one of the most inventive boss characters I've ever seen. Even if I'm not sure exactly how he's able to morph like he does. Or, you know, shoot seeds like a Gatling gun. Of the dozens of bosses in Cuphead, no two are anywhere close to similar. Every single boss has its own look, its own stage, and its own mechanics that are completely different than anything else in the game. But Sam, why are we killing all of these lovely creatures anyway? It's because the devil told us to, that's why. <laughs> After losing in a game of craps in the Devil's Casino, Cuphead and his brother Mugman, who I'm playing as, end up owing their souls to the Devil. Rather than give up so easily, they offer to go and collect on the debts owed by the other inhabitants of Inkwell Island. Of course those debts are the contracts for the souls of everyone else on the island. And those folks aren't gonna give them up so easily. Would you, Gerard? Oh, absolutely not. Even if I technically owe the devil a contract for my soul, you can bet your ass I'd be fighting to keep my signature off that piece of paper until my dying breath. I'm not going through whatever torture-filled nightmare that dude's got waiting for me. Even in a world where the only video game was Five Nights at Freddy's? Don't you even joke about that. To match the vintage look of Cuphead, the soundtrack in this game is mwah, exquisite. Think about every single early cartoon you've ever seen. That scratchy yet charming jazz style music is everywhere in Cuphead. It's enough to transport you back to a bygone era of entertainment, where movies with dialogue in them were still called talkies. Honestly, there are a few times where I wish it wasn't a talkie. The music's great, but some of the voices are so distorted that they end up sounding creepy and weird. Sometimes like in the game shop. Just downright terrifying, because everything else sounds so good through the vinyl scratches. Just comes off as a little too much. While it's a small criticism, it's definitely worth calling out, especially when you're hearing the voices over and over and over again while playing the same levels over and over again after dying over and over again. Thankfully, that's the only issue we really had with Cuphead's looks and sounds. The game runs smooth as butter, like a game that requires such precision in its mechanics should. If you look closely, you can see every frame of its hand-drawn animation with every movement. And when you're not frantically trying to dodge spiked casino chips and fireballs, it's absolutely stunning to take a look at. Maybe watch a YouTube video? Like this one right here! Exactly! We're on YouTube. Good to know. Yeah, so don't say anything stupid, Sam. I've never played Bioshock. Well, there goes all of our credibility. Cuphead is in no way an easy game to complete. It is not, Gerard. Just watching you run through single player mode was giving me terror sweats. That difficulty is what Cuphead is all about. You're playing through beautiful level after beautiful level, learning boss fight patterns, slowly getting better and better until you can easily fight your way through the toughest of big baddies. A lot of the joy from playing comes from realizing and knowing that you're improving. Things seem absolutely hopeless when you first jump in, with bosses cutting you down left and right, often before you can get past their first form. But then you get slightly better. You learn, you find your play style, and figure out how to make it work for you in the long run. Cuphead doesn't mess around with getting you into the action. Right after the initial cutscene, you're thrown into your first boss battles against a dirty potato, a crying onion, and a carrot that somehow has psychic powers. It's reasonably easy, but once you finish it and end up in the overworld, you realize that the ease you enjoyed will not be around for long. It's a good thing that the overworld itself is so surprisingly enjoyable. 
It's just as detailed as the main gameplay, and all the work that they put into this overworld makes sense considering all the activities and secrets that it holds. There are coins to hunt down, secret paths to discover, and some little period NPCs that you can interact with. The art style present in the overworld is so charming that it almost begs to become its own fully fledged game type. Maybe one day. From that point forward, it's boss fight after boss fight after boss fight. You finish one, some paths open up, and you immediately dive into the next one. The pace can feel unrelenting, but hey, Cuphead isn't here to hold your hand. It's here to beat you into submission or die trying. The vast majority of the bosses follow the same simple formula. You shoot at them with magical finger pistols until they die. With the basic weapon, you can shoot in eight directions, much like Contra games. And you can also jump and do an aerial counter move on any pink enemies or projectiles, something that's gonna become necessary for our completionist run, Gerard. It's not all boss battles, though. There are also run and gun levels, which are platforming stages in which you have to kill smaller enemy types and collect coins to spend on power-ups. There's also the plane bosses, which put you into a side-scrolling, R-type style aerial shooter. These bosses are particularly big assholes. Finally, there's the mausoleum levels. There, you'll fight off a bunch of ghosts that can only be killed by jump parries. While all very different, all four level types have one thing in common. They're a huge pain in the ass until you figure out exactly how to pull them off. It is nice that the mausoleum exists. I was downright terrible at using the parry until I was forced to use it on one of those levels. In fact, I learned something new on just about every level I played. Who needs a long-winded tutorial anyways? I'd rather get my ass kicked until I do better. Who doesn't want to get beat up till they learn, right? Even with specific bosses, it's all a learning process. Fights, when done perfectly, only last about a minute or two, but can take dozens of tries to get down correctly. And I really appreciate this, especially when facing off against some of the harder bosses, like the Phantom Express. After dozens of attempts, I had his patterns down, but no single failed run ever felt like a heartbreaker, because I always knew that I could return to the same spot in just a minute or so. The fact that the death screen has a progress bar that shows shows you exactly how close you were to ending whatever monster you're facing off against goes a long way in keeping you motivated and focused. There are even little flags that show when boss form changes are going to happen. You'll always know when you challenge the boss enough to get his FINAL FORM. To truly complete Cuphead, we're gonna have to use every tool at our disposal, Sam, especially because eventually, we're gonna have to run this thing without getting hit by a single ability. Together, you and me, co-op style. Thankfully, Gerard, to help us along, Cuphead has provided more than a few upgrades for our arsenal. Including the basic pea shooter weapon, there are six weapons total in Cuphead. There's the homing shot chaser, the short range shotgun spread, the boomerang style roundabout weapon, the charge delayed shot, and the bouncy lobber. And every weapon has its basic shot, plus a more powerful X move that can be used at the cost of one of the combo cards you can get by landing shots on enemies. There's also super attacks, which consume all five of your attack cards, but do something game changing, like a Kamehameha style laser beam or turning you invincible for a short time. Be careful though, if you screw up using one of the supers, you'll lose all five combo cards for no reason at all, and that feels bad, man. There's also six charms that you can use to make yourself that much more powerful in your quest to bring down all those pesky bosses. You can only have one charm equipped at a time, so be sure you know what you're getting yourself into when you spend your hard-earned coins. There's my personal favorite, the Smoke Bomb, which turns you invisible and invincible while dashing. Super useful for dodging a particularly nasty attack, which by the way, happens all the time. I personally love Sugar, which makes your first jump into an automatic parry. Super useful considering the parry move is pretty tough to get the hang of in the first place. There's also the Heart, which gives you one extra HP. But we won't be using that one because we have to beat every single boss without getting hit. Right, but also in Pork Rind Shop, there's the Super Meter Filling Coffee, the Damaging Parry Move Whetstone, and the Upgraded Twin Hearts. Gerard, like I said, we're not gonna be using that one either. I can't be able to get hit when I'm this good. And we're gonna have to be that good to pull this one off, Sam. Are you ready to deep dive into one of the toughest completionist games we've ever attempted? No, but let's go. Make no mistake, Cuphead puts players through bullet hell. There is constantly a barrage of crap flying towards and past you that's aiming to kill you. It's stressful, it's blindingly fast, and it's oftentimes unforgiving. While early stages and bosses are relatively simple, the later stages ramp things up with an overall increase in boss difficulty, as well as adding enemies and hazards during those boss fights, which are based on the themes of the levels themselves. 
Here's the thing about Cuphead. It's not that it's hard. You can learn to deal with hard. Each and every time we managed to pull off a perfect run of a boss, it was one of the most high five required moments of my life. Oh, I'm aware. My wrist still hurts from when we beat Grim Matchstick. Can you please tone down your hand smacks, Gerard? No can't do, amigo. Yet the real thing about Cuphead is that there's just so much to it. You can totally just play through the game, beat every boss, and just be done with the game. But true completionists, true madmen, will want to go further. You can always get better at Cuphead. We learned that fact after unlocking something very special. Something that we had only heard rumors about going into our playthrough. Something so horrifying. I can't believe we even attempted it. Expert, expert mode. mode! Once you finish Cuphead once, you'll unlock Expert Mode, where everything that was once old is now new again. Everything will move faster than before, making even the most simple of bosses that much more difficult. And guess what, Gerard? We're gonna have to bring this one down too, without getting hit. It's safe to say that Expert Mode has been one of the most difficult challenges we've ever faced here on The Completionist. When I found out that it existed, I was crushed. That's why I waited so long to talk about this game. We'd already struggled through so much, and here's yet another playthrough of this thing, and even harder than before. We'd gotten so used to the timing on the normal mode that it took a while to get used to the Expert Mode trials. More than once, I was waiting for a specific attack to come out, I need to get nailed by it a full handful of seconds before I was expecting. And to get that coveted 100% in Cuphead? Well, it's more like 200% because the first 100% is for normal playthrough and then 200% for the second playthrough on expert mode, but you know what I mean, that completionist 100%. We had to earn S rankings on every boss mission in expert mode. That means performing at least three parries, doing at least six super moves, beating the stage around two minutes, a little over or under is okay, and of course, not taking a single hit ever in the boss fights. Gerard, let's not forget about those P rankings we had to get on all those run and gun stages. To get those, we had to collect every single coin within them and beat those stages without firing a single solitary shot. This might sound impossible, but you can even get past the mini bosses in the run and gun stages by using calculated dashes or teleports. Yes, I know it's crazy, but we had to do it. But Cuphead is far from perfect. This game is absolutely riddled with bugs that make completing it far harder and more frustrating than it ever had to be. Just off the top of my head, there were some wonky hitboxes, glitched achievements, and sometimes straight up game crashes. The game actually crashed so often on the Xbox One that halfway through our completion, we just abandoned the console and started all over again on the PC. But the worst glitch of all was that little line of code misplaced somewhere within the game's files that made it so that our controllers would sometimes randomly start vibrating incessantly for no reason. Your controller is supposed to vibrate when you take a hit, but it's not supposed to last for an entire game. This might not sound like the most egregious glitch in the world, but in a game that requires this kind of focus and precision, it was pretty much a dream killer. Even if you restart the level, the vibrating will still continue until the next time you get hit. The only way to stop the shaking is to take a hit, and in our playthrough, we can't get hit once. Oh, hang on. We're never gonna do this. But, we pulled it off, Gerard. We did it. Sure, but was it worth it, Sam? I think so. For a game that's so simple at its core, it's amazing to have so many things to do in Cuphead, even if it did take years off my life to pull it off. Cuphead gives you the option to go deep into it, but doesn't require it. It's challenging on its own, but doesn't demand you to go into the lengths that, let's say, a completionist and his streamer buddy would have to go through. It's nice to have options, you know? It's certainly been a pleasure playing this game with you, Sam, but if you blow this at the last second of the devil fight, I swear to Samus, I will fight you! How can you be so sure that I'm the one that's gonna screw up, Gerard? You've been known to get hit by Goopy Legrand, the easiest boss in the game. Oh, you take that back! That was one time! My controller was malfunctioning, there was lag, a dog barked, I hadn't had my coffee yet, someone came in the room and I... Uh, uh. Sounds like excuses to me. Hey, look, man, I apologize for that. I'm sorry. Can we just move on? Only if you let me play as Cuphead, because I'm sick of being the Luigi to your Mario. Okay, fine. You can be first player, but only this once, and don't tell anyone else I did this.
Cuphead's main reward, much like hard games of its ilk, is the personal reward of knowing that you managed to get through all of it. I certainly feel accomplished. Not sure I'd put myself through the torture again, though. Pulling off everything without getting hit was certainly one of the most challenging things I've ever done in a game, perhaps even in my life, and my thumbs are going to pay for it for weeks. There are definitely a couple of cool things you can get for pulling everything off in the game. For getting an A rank or better on every boss level, you can unlock an old-timey two-strip color mode, which makes everything just a bit more washed out. Oh yeah, and we went ahead and unlocked black and white mode too. That one was done by earning a P rank on every run and gun level. P for pacifist. That particular challenge may sound hard, but it really isn't as tough as it seems. Especially if you're gods like we are. And while there are a good amount of achievements in Cuphead, they're shockingly easy to unlock for the most part. The only ones worth talking about are the ones that you'll naturally get by earning S and P rankings throughout the game. Once again, cementing the fact that Cuphead doesn't want anything from you except your immortal soul. While we completed Cuphead, there were two full campaign playthroughs, one on normal and one on expert mode, 18 bosses defeated twice, which equates to 36 bosses total killed, zero shots fired doing a pacifist run on the running gun levels, 1,831 total deaths, 17 hours of total playtime on the Xbox One, 35 hours on the PC, totaling to 52 hours of total playtime, and six near fist fights between me and Sam. Do you, uh, you actually think our friendship's gonna recover from this one? I think it might be just stronger than ever, Sam. If years of you bugging me to come on the show couldn't harm our friendship, I don't think a simple retro shmup is gonna do much damage to what we built. It's truly something special, you know? <laughs> Thank God, because after this nightmare, I'm never coming back, bud. You can keep your show, I don't need it. Peace. Wait, 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 wait. no, no, I, I, was, I was just about to say that the true award for completing Cuphead is friendship. You're my friend, Sam! Sam, I want you to play games with me again! Come back, Sam! Sam! At the end of the day, Cuphead gives back exactly what you put into it. If you're looking to get into a challenging game that you can complete in a few hours, you can do that. If you want to speedrun something difficult, I can't think of a better option. If you want to get really deep into it and achieve perfection on every level and every achievement, you can do that too. But the key here is that you don't have to. And you know what? I wouldn't recommend it either. Cuphead is an absolute joy to play, whether you give up after a few bosses or squeeze every last drop out of the liquid in the little guy's head. It's a great game that I recommend everyone plays, but not a game I can recommend completing because of the amount of insane hours necessary to complete it. Now, I don't want to be the meme that says that Cuphead is the Dark Souls of run and gun games, but make no mistake, Cuphead, even without the need to complete it, is very, very difficult. Although the journey is quite fruitful. It's constantly rewarding you with upgrades, with consistent reminders of motivation when you fail upon death with things like the face flags, making you feel like you were almost there just when you failed. While it seemed like we breezed through the game, completing Cuphead requires a stupid amount of skill. We did it on co-op just to prove that we could. It's no easy feat, and anyone who does this should be proud, even if you do it on your own. And while you do get cool filters in the end for some completionist things, the game does not give you enough for a total reward for the journey of completing the game. The journey is fun, and the challenge is awesome, but the payoff is a little disappointing. So, so with, with that, that in mind, mind guys, we give, we this, give this game our completionist rating of... Just finish it. Just finish it. Finish it. You are a meme. Finish it! That's all the time we have for today, guys. So please, as always, let me know throughout today's episode somewhere on the internet. Guys, Sam is awesome. Please go follow him over at twitch.tv slash strippin'. That's where I live. The man streams almost every day, and if you want to see a good gamer kick ass every single day, then Sam is your guy. If you liked today's video, hit that like button, share with your friends, be sure to subscribe, and hey, if you missed last week's video on Bubsy, Give it a click or tap right here, and if you see any of this Cuphead merch, you can go to the Yeti.com and buy it! Use the affiliate link for TOVG in the description down below. We'll see you guys next week. Let's go rest, Sam. I need a nap. <laughs>